Welcome back to the Shine Within podcast. Uh, let me make sure I pronounce your name first correctly. Avantika. Avantika? Yes. Avanika. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome back to the Chain Within Podcast. Avanika is a passionate mental health advocate and psychology major from India, leads the impactful podcast, Beautiful You, aiming to support and connect with those feelings isolated by their struggles. Diagnosed with depression, anxiety, PTSD at age 15, and bipolar disorder type 2 at 17, her own experiences have deeply informed her advocacy. Featured in The Week magazine and The Times of India, Avendika's journey has reached a wide audience, further amplified by her appearances on international podcasts. At 21, she she heads a dedicated mental health advocacy team, striving to make a difference through encouraging content and events. With a love for poetry, solo traveling, and coffee, Avanika embodies resilience and the drive to inspire change in the mental health landscape. Thank you so much for joining me on my show today. I'm excited to talk to you. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And um. I was just thinking, wow, it's 7.30 over where you're at right now. Yeah. <laughs> when I was your age at 21, I was probably just getting home from a party at 7.30 a.m. Of course, you know, wow. who knows, drunk or with drugs. And I believe that a lot of those behaviors and narcotics and everything led up for me personally to having anxiety and depression because, I mean, obviously alcohol is a depressant here. But uh, so... <laughs> I'm so glad you are and you're doing what you're doing. So keep doing it because you're you're just doing amazing. You're already going on podcasts. You're already featured in articles and you're a contributor to amongst other things as well, I'm sure. But can you go ahead and share how peer support has influenced your journey through your depression, anxiety, and like bipolar disorder and why you think it's crucial for mental health recovery? So peers, so peer, I I didn't have peer support uh in my life, I think, till 2000 like early early 2022 so I must have been what 19 at that point so I was diagnosed with bipolar when I was 17 and for two years I was just juggling with it uh, by myself I was trying to figure out the right treatment the right psychiatrist the right therapist I have been to several psychiatrists and therapists who haven't been the right fit for me so it was there was the it was quite difficult to like get the right person on board and um, yeah, I was just struggling with the acceptance, um, understanding what it is and what it means now. And then it gets very tiring to deal with it alone. I don't have a caregiver. Like I ha I do have guardians and parents, but like I, I didn't have a caregiver for my mental health who understood what I went through and supported me through it. So it was just really me, some of my friends maybe who would try to just listen because there is only so much that they can do, right? That is when I decided that, okay, I'm very tired. I can't do this alone. And I, and I need to be like, I need to be surrounded by people who have been through something similar so who understand what I go through because it's it's bipolar or any mental health disorder or challenges is something that if you haven't been through it, you don't understand the gravity of it. So considering that, I just looked up Bipolar India, like Bipolar Support Groups in India, and then I came across this amazing, amazing support group. It's uh, by this organization called Bipolar India. They're doing amazing work. And I immediately like messaged the founder and I got added in the group and I could feel the warmth. So being part, now that it's been over a year, um, being part of the support group has made me humanize the whole experience that I have. It has made me feel less alone. It has made me feel like I belong to some community and um, it has made me feel supported. So that is very crucial when it comes to your healing journey because you're not alone. And even though it might it may seem catastrophic because on days you do catastrophic these things, right? you do uh, exaggerate in your head about what is going on. So like you need someone to ground you as well. You need examples that, oh, people have been living through it and they have gotten out of it. So you need something like that to keep you going on your absolute worst days. So being part of peer support uh, groups have made me like feel that, that I'm not alone and this is not the end of the world. So that is something that has genuinely, crucially helped me with my mental health. Yes, and I would agree because I'm thinking back to when I was in an outpatient program, at first I felt like I was alone. Like, you know, do people really have anger issues? Do people really have like depression? 
um, because I felt like I was the only one who had it because everywhere else in my world, like my friends never complained about anything. They were fine. You know, my family siblings didn't complain about anything. They were fine. So I felt like it was me. Is something wrong with me? Like I was, I was sad. And it wasn't until I had that outpatient program where then I'm like, ah, this is my tribe. <laughs> they get me. <laughs> yeah. They get me because they're going through the exact same stuff that I'm going through. And it is that that support, that peer support that you get from, from them. And then you don't feel alone anymore. You feel like, okay, yeah, let's talk. And then once we become vulnerable and share our story, it makes us feel a little bit better because then we feel like we have a support system and someone to say, okay, you know, we can get through this together. So that's yeah. awesome. It, yeah. And it is important to give ourselves that like self-compassion and grace. Um, and it's definitely part of the journey, the healing journey. Now, how have these practices help you cope with your mental health challenges and how do you incorporate them into your daily life? Being part of a support group. Oh, just so with self-compassion and having grace. Yeah. Oh my God. I talk about it so much. It's having self-compassion and grace and not even just with mental health challenge, but just in general. It's so important because we live in a very fast paced world. Everyone is moving all the time. And it's like, if you're living in a busy country or if you're living in a big city like Mumbai, where I live, it's very hard to, it's very easy to just, you know, fall into the uh, trap of that fast paced life. And then you forget to like, you know, um, you forget to like just be kind to yourself. You forget to take a moment to yourself and live in the moment. So how self-compassion and grace is helping is because it cognitively changes how you look at yourself. And your thoughts are the building stones for anything. Like everything starts from your thoughts. So if you don't have positive thoughts to, towards yourself, if you, if you don't have an encouraging dialogue with yourself, it, it will impact you, your actions, your belief system, everything. So it's very crucial to have an encouraging system uh you know a belief system or an encouraging dialogue with yourself so like for example i'll give you one uh example that i started like i started using grace and compassion um from like two for, for like for about two three years now so let's say that i have to wake up at seven and i put up put up like two alarms to wake up at seven but i wake up at nine so it, and and i have like a huge schedule planned so seven to nine is like missed right and earlier I would get mad and I would be like, oh my God, you're such a loser. You can't even wake up at time. What are you going to do with your life and stuff like that? The whole day is ruined and everything. That would be my first thought. But then I was like, this is such a negative way to wake up. This is such a negative way to start your day, right? Like if I'm the one who's being so harsh to myself, like it's that's not going to work. So instead of that, I would be like, okay, let's take a moment. It's nine. It's not seven. Did I have any other appointments that others were impacted by it? If, if that, then that's bad. Like, then I would be like, let's not make it happen. Let's apologize to the person. But if, so, if you know, I don't have commitments to all this, it's just commitment to myself. I would be like, why did my body need so much rest? That's my, that would be my first question. So it's good that I got two hours of sleep now because two more hours of sleep because that my probably body like needed it. So like, I know I'm not a lazy person. So it's just my body giving me messages. So that helps you be calmer, be more in the present and just humanize your entire experience, honestly. So it just helps me uh, keep going and have like a more positive approach, which makes me more productive in general. So. Yeah, you wake up and you're just like, you know what, I'm not going to talk to myself negatively this this morning, <laughs> because it is very important that we actually speak kindly to ourselves because we I often ask myself, well, is this something that I would talk to a child too? Or is this how I would tell a stranger? Absolutely not. So why would I tell myself this? No. <laughs> yes. And showing that compassion. So waking up and I'm the first thing I will I do is like, okay, I, Lord, thank you. You know that I woke up first off. And then like you said, those talk that that internal dialogue that you have with yourself. And if you just slept in a little bit extra, your body needed it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was meant for that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Any other practices that you do? Well, other practices that I do is I, one of the other mental health practices is going to therapy. I have been in and off, uh, on and off therapy for about five years at this point, but I've been going consistently to therapy to just one therapist for two years at this point. And um, therapy is some, so it helps me manage, understand bipolar as well and have like a style management. It helps me understand my strengths and weaknesses and we just 
the therapy is mainly for that and then we talk about everything else surrounding it so therapy uh, journaling i like to journal sometimes i we started doing this thing called moments of nothingness where um, i engage in an activity which particularly isn't productive will not get me anywhere because i used to be a workaholic and that would stress me out a lot that would be like bad for my mental health so um as we i have started to do like mandala coloring because that's my moment of nothingness or i love exploring cafes i love traveling so these are also some of the things which keep me sane honestly it's it's a good break from your daily life um what else i like i i like exploring places i like uh, meeting new people so i meet travelers every now and then um which is also you know a, honestly a good mental health practice because it's like it helps you get so many perspectives it helps you engage in meaningful conversations with others and when you're engaging in social community that genuinely helps you feel connected that goes a long way with your mental well-being as well that's awesome yeah when you were saying that you enjoy solo traveling i was like oh that is amazing because it's like this is your time with yourself as well and really trying to discover who you are as a being and being out there meeting different people like what is your favorite place what, what what's your favorite place to go to or what was your most memorable traveling destination so i have only had two travels so far uh one my first solo trip was in france oh, wow. and it was a very bold move because i don't know how to speak <laughs> french and <laughs> I was 19 and this was my first solo trip so I was like I don't even know how to solo travel so it was a very bold move uh, I remember like getting to the country and I'm like everything is so different everything is so written in french and I do not understand what's going on here they do not have like signboards in english it's only like mm-hmm. french so like in some places at least um and it was just so hard to like navigate through it and people don't speak french like english there not 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 everyone speaks there so it was like it was terrifying i was so close to breaking down so many mm-hmm. times <laughs> but it was an amazing trip uh apart from that i went to himachal pradesh which is a state up north in india so it was like all mountains and everything um and yeah it was i remember this one time where i so there was this place called kasol i was going from shimla to kasol and i was like you know what i'm i'm solo traveling i'm on a low budget let's do it the way that locals do i remember changing buses and i was so terrified and then the bus was so packed that i had to stand with my heavy 15 kg backpack mm-hmm. and i just had to stand the entire way and i was like suffocated because it's like i have nowhere to move i can't even move my body it's so packed right i was like man this if i had just booked a cab it would be so much convenient but i was like you know what this is the beauty of solo traveling and like low budget traveling so um yeah i honestly love love both of them both of them were very different experiences one was international one was you know local here um met really incredible people that i'm still in contact with so yeah i love i love it that's awesome yeah it's all about the experience you know so we have to experience everything <laughs> that's one one way to be happy is to experience everything and be okay with everything that you're experiencing <laughs> Yeah. So um, managing bipolar disorder while juggling college, I mean, that and like your extracurricular activities that you're doing is challenging, I'm sure. Like what strategies have you actually found effective in maintaining balance and ensuring your well-being? That's a good question. So I don't want to repeat my answer, but honestly, therapy is one of the most important parts of my life. I um, It depends how often I go to therapy. Sometimes I go once every two weeks sometimes it's once a month sometimes it's once every month depending on once every week some depending on you know uh if i like how often i need it but therapy has helped me he has psychoeducated me and he's helped me uh get through like understand so many elements not just about myself but about life in general we have worked on my time management so time management using a lot of time management techniques is something that has helped me maintain a balance um taking self engaging in conversations and spending quality time with my friends also is one of those things so i know how to prioritize it so i have this i have this whole system in place where it's like i strongly believe that you don't need to act on your feelings so because you may, you will never feel like working hard your body is literally wired to be comfortable so you're not going to you're not going to feel like oh going to the gym today or uh working that extra hour on your laptop or whatever like that you're working on right because it's uncomfortable so you what you can do is knowing that your body is wired to be comfortable and that it 
it will feel you will feel uncomfortable you feel like not doing the hard work you can acknowledge that you don't want to do it and then be like okay so what and then still end up doing the work so it's like because i i am good at delaying uh, short gratification it has helped me get my work done because there are so many extracurricular activities that i do that it it demands for me to like sit at one place and get my work done right so one of the things and also romanticizing life i romanticize the hell out of life so i love love that going to cafes i love um you know people watching i love engaging with strange in conversations with strangers and i love like just sipping my coffee and getting my work done so changing your environment finding your comfort space um that is something that has helped me as well keeping it like keeping it new for yourself like you could be maybe you're someone who needs to explore a new place or maybe you're someone who wants to find one place and find comfort with it and stick to it either way works right so doing that finding ways to make your work bearable is one thing because uh, breaking breaking them down in smaller tasks is another so these are all like some some time management techniques that i've used um and also just strategizing your work and because i have this thing called like to like in my to do list i have a one year plan i have a six month plan then i jot it down to like a month plan and then like weekly and then daily it sounds like a lot of work but it it's like it's like a 15 20 minute work and then it just eases out everything because i know what i have to do for the rest of the month right so it's like it's good to go it's a good system and another part is using calendars i cannot function without notion at all so i have everything dumb there so these are just some things that help me balance my extracurriculars honestly and also on top of that like we discussed before showing grace and compassion is also one thing because it's so easy for me to get mad at myself for not getting anything done especially when i'm going through a depressive episode it drains me completely so during those times i have to prioritize i have to make sure okay these are things that i absolutely need to get done like for example now that i'm in college at the moment i need to like attend my lectures and so sometimes if i'm going through a depressive episode just making to college is good enough i just need to be in college and that's it like that's my whole plan for the day so it's like that like prioritizing your responsibilities prioritizing what you have to do in the day while being kind and grace to your show grace to yourself is important Wow. Yes. And so does your therapist actually go ahead and provide these workbooks so that you're able to fill it in or, and they kind of like teach you how they guide you, how to go ahead and conduct your, your goal list and everything, or is this something you do on your own? I no, no. This is something that I do on my own. There are a lot of things. So I keep reading as well, like self-help books and everything. So I keep like educating myself on these things. Um, He just helps me. So if there's like a dilemma or something, he helps me get perspective. and uh, whenever there are new things that i'm tackling we mainly it, like i said it's mainly around managing bipolar so we work on understanding my triggers for different episodes how do we avoid that stuff like that so one of the major important things that we la- worked on last year has been my workaholic tendencies like if you had asked me a year ago i would say a good day for me is when i'm working 16 hours a day mm-hmm. that's insane yeah that's because like i used to do that in covid times like when it was just covid and i don't have to travel i would start my like my day would start at like 8 in the morning and it would end at 12 or 2 in at night which is a lot which is a lot of hours yeah. so um that's insane right so uh, that would be a good day for me so it's like i was a proper workaholic for for like 2 years and then we worked on that because it helps to maintain a good balance in life otherwise my depressive episodes were like triggered a lot it it would just be very stressful so yeah And that's great that you find a good therapist to help you navigate through certain challenges. Like, yeah, working, that's too, that's too much. <laughs> Especially if you're so young. <laughs> As you get older, you're probably yeah, be thinking, oh, I need to work 20, 20 hours a day. <laughs> like, no, it's too much, too much. Like, even for myself, like, I have to make sure I take my breaks. And I mean, I'm working from home, um, but I have to make sure I take a break. <laughs> it's important to have your break and not just like eat, eat in front of your computer for lunchtime, but actually step away from your computer go sit down listen to some music or something no no maybe no digital screens and then just eat <laughs> yeah so as a young leader running a mental health advocacy team how do you intertwine leadership and entrepreneurship with mental health advocacy and what challenges have you actually encountered that's a really good question so 
So basically, what we do is we advocate for mental health through content, and we have we are on Instagram, we have a newsletter, we have a podcast uh, that's on Spotify and YouTube, and we are bringing it offline as well now, where we um, approach like go to like places and psychoeducate people, spread mental health awareness offline. So we wanna create an impact on ground as well. So. It's a huge team. It's a team of uh, about 27 people at the moment. It's like five departments and it is a lot of work, honestly. But what, one thing, one of the biggest challenges that I've faced is people management in general because when you are someone who is at the top, this is something that I always say that when you are someone who's at the top, you're expected to have all the answers all the time. You have to know the past, the future, the present. You have to know how everyone's doing and you have to like be in touch with everyone because Everyone who's working right now with me, they are all volunteers. So there is very less incentive. They don't have like monetary incentive to stay, right? So it's because they are passionate about mental health advocacy. It's because they see certain value in it. So I have to keep the momentum going. I have to make sure that they stay. They have a reason to stay. I have to give them a reason to stay. And um, yeah, it's, it's people management. And there are just so many different kinds of people out there who that you get to work with. So understanding different people and understand and strategizing your way to it. Maintaining a personal connect with every single volunteer is also important because I'm the face of Beautiful You. So I need to make sure that, you know, they are connected with me as well. So they feel like they are here um, as part of it. It's so in, in fostering the right workplace culture. I think one of the hardest part about this is when I'm experiencing a depressive episode, when I'm doing good, I'm able to manage everything really well. But when I'm experiencing a depressive episode, that's when everything gets so overwhelming. I barely get out of bed on some days. So me showing up for my team gets so much harder. Uh, I am very lucky to have a team, have a set of people with me who understand these things, who are just as passionate about it and who also shake show grace. So if I if I cannot absolutely like show up one day, I'll just let them know what is happening and I'll let them know this is what is happening and I really... Like I tried, but I like really can't do this at the moment. I'll get back to you the moment I feel better. So it's like having a team who understands that also goes a long way. So it's 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 difficult, I won't lie, because it also gets overwhelming, right? The whole planning process, so much work is going on, so many verticals are running. It gets um difficult at times. But at the same time, I, I have an incredible team. So being part of my uh it, it makes me feel so grateful all the time like I, this is one of the things that i'm grateful for every single day to have such an incredible team working with me so they make entrepreneurship fun they make make it less overwhelming they make it um they make it easier for me so yeah it's just one of the hardest thing is managing it when i'm not doing good like on my bad days uh, mental health wise i can already tell you're a good leader because if you have a good team that reflects the leader so <laughs> it's like <laughs> you did something awesome because your team is like on point yeah they're doing good yeah, because it's, you're doing good <laughs> yeah no it's about like it's if you're you know how the whole thing works like if you if you, if your team performs badly that's a reflection on you so right. it's because you're the one who so it's like I would never blame a team member for anything that if anything goes wrong it's like okay how do I fix it how do I make it better because it's a reflection on me but if you're winning if you're doing something good then that's a team member so that's that's just the kind of mentality that I go with. So it um takes off some pressure of them, or I would like to be. So I I hope that it takes some pressure of them, because um honestly I'm there for them all the time, and um I just I just want to make it a place like even not for other people as well, but just within the team I want it to be a team where we grow together. Uh, not like not just as a team, but also individually. So I would like for it to be an empowering space for everyone. That's awesome. Now, any future initiatives coming up for your team and yourself? So many. Oh my God, so many. So we are like working on mental health circles where it's basically a safe space for people to explore themselves and other people as well. So which is a part of like community building. We want to make people feel less alone, want, make, want to make them feel connected uh, with other people. So it would be just a, like about 10 to 10, 10 to 12 people joining in a circle. We will have a moderator on board. We are working in collaboration with an NGO and we plan to go to government schools and colleges, uh, government schools specifically and have like mental health workshops be conducted. Then there are so many others that are going on right now. We had our first workshop session with uh, 10, 8 to 10th graders um, of a coaching center 
and we talked about stress management because the exams are coming up so yeah wow um, yeah yeah there are um, a lot many others as well oh my camera is not working that's okay <laughs> there are a lot of other as well that is happening it's just it's, it's a very exciting time Yeah, I'd say definitely. Now, um, mental health perception varies widely across cultures, of course, you know, but based on your own experiences, how is mental health approached in the Indian culture? And what steps do you think uh, are necessary for improvement, if any? Mental health in India is developing. It's not there. It's not where you would like for it to be. uh i think it's much better in uh, certain european countries when it comes to acceptance um that's a good question because it's like it's a, it's honestly a developing it's in a developing stage right now because we are at a stage where people in uh urban areas understand the importance of it but not in rural ones there and it is huge man so getting advocacy and awareness to every nook and corner of india it, it's going to take years maybe decades to get us there but i can definitely see a change because new courses are coming up people, more people are taking up psychology more people are interested in it especially after covid more people got to like be aware that oh mental health challenges do exist and it's not just in your head and stuff like that you know the issues that you hear about it so this is definitely something which is getting better i just think it needs to be incorporated better with the government as well there needs to be more ca- campaigns that spread awareness about it we do have certain mental health um illnesses covered in insurance now like just in the recent years but the thing is with that it's written on paper that it's covered by insurance like when you are uh, in patient and something like that but it gets rejected when they ha- when they know that you have a proper diagnosis like if you have an official diagnosis it might you might get rejected or doctors may not use the insurance to for that so it's not really implemented well enough so i think it needs to be implemented well enough there needs to be more rehabilitation centers which are not just shit hole some of them are just some of them are just there like they just take the patient in and put the patient in it but like there is no rehabilitation mm. that is done so um yeah that is one thing um there needs to be education at lower levels of schooling as well so people are about, like from like first from like fifth grade onwards like there needs to be uh, conversations about what is emotion you know understanding your psyche um and all of that so these conversations are like something that the government needs to do better honestly we need to we, we have a long way to go but uh, i am very hopeful because this is a time where everything is just growing in india so there are definitely a lot more psychologists that you can see coming up That's awesome. So more like a community too, you know, where you're establishing more education centers and more reha- rehabilitation centers. So that way it's like, because it's continuous, you know, this journey is continuous. Like yeah. we're, we're, we keep going and we're just going to hopefully just improve and still continue and evolve. That's so I also wanted to, because you're 21, you know, and, you know, dating is already hard as it is. <laughs> at any stages or any age in life, right? Um, can you share some insights on navigating relationships and dating while managing your mental health? Oh, that's a good question. I hope my mom doesn't hear this. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, and she listens to like every episode that I put out there, you know, it's actually very good. Every single episode, I she would have some, like she would be like commenting, I'm so proud of my daughter or something like Aww. that. And like every single episode, she's like listening to it or sometimes if i'm recording at home uh mm-hmm. she would just sit by my side and just listen to the conversation it's actually very supportive of her it's very adorable that's awesome <laughs> so yeah dating um date wow uh so i have dated some like i've uh, by dating i just mean like going out on like dates and not like mm-hmm. in a relationship um it's like i was in a relationship for like about 2 years and then after that uh, i had like no experience with dating and seeing other people but then after that i ended i was like okay you know what let's try the dating apps now so i was i have been on and off the dating apps for a while and i would just like go out with other people and see what the vibe is about so the thing is i've seen so what what is the thing is i'm very strategic about it so my instagram page i have advocated for mental health so much i'm very open about my own journey So if you just scroll through my Instagram for like 2 minutes you will just know that oh there is something that is happening here that she has 
uh, mental health, like the challenge that she has been through. Um, and there's this the time, the week magazine and everything. So if you just scroll through it, you'll know that I have the diagnosis of bipolar. So my whole point is, if you are on my and it's a public account, so you can easily look me up as well. So and I have advocated for it. So you know that I'm passionate about it. I you know that I run something. So it's, everything is just out there for me. So um, I have seen some people who are very uncomfortable with it, who are like, oh, let's not talk about it or let's not get into it or who are very ignorant, who, are, who come from, I like to think that they come from a very privileged place if, we, if they don't have empathy, if they don't understand what depression is or how debilitating that could be. They don't understand like the basics of mental health, right? For me, it's very important to be with someone who understands these things, who is uh, compassionate and empathetic. And even if you don't, fully understand it i need you to be open to learning about it there is a whole difference so it's okay if you don't know the nitty gritties of it i'll teach you i'll explain everything to you but i just want you to be curious enough to know what it is so yeah if you go through my instagram it's some of the people are like oh, oh this is like weird or okay if we don't like the energy or whatever but there are a lot more people who get very like impressed apparently who are very happy that I advocate for mental health from a very young age and everything. So it's like, it's they're very supportive of the work as well. So that's like, okay, that's a green flag. That's that's good. Like, I love the support. So uh, some of them stick with me, even even if we don't see each other, they just stick with me because um, they, they're they just like, oh, she seems cool and, you know, she's someone who's very passionate, so let's just have her inner circle. So they like to be friends, so I've made a lot of friends that way. So yeah, it's coming to your question <laughs> coming to your question <laughs> so dating is uh i don't do it when i'm struggling with my mental health because that's when like i, I have to prioritize myself and my alone time and i i need to like focus on certain things if i'm seeing someone at that moment i'll let them know that this is uh you know something that's happening it's very like hard for me but, but i'm taking care of myself i won't be like as active um Honestly, communication is the way to go. If regardless of living with a disorder or not, communication in any relationship, or if you're if you're talking to someone new, because it's not nice to leave people hanging, or it's not nice to just leave them guessing. So like you're suddenly disappearing, and they're like they're left with so many questions about oh what is happening and stuff like that. So it's just not nice, right? So it's it's communication is the way to go when it comes to dating and uh, mental health. Uh, letting people know about it, about what's going on and seeking help. Be okay with asking for support. That Those are the two things that keep me going. Like if if I'm close enough with someone and if I need support or if I just need someone to listen, I'll just ask them, do you have the emotional bandwidth right now to listen to um, me for, for like a few minutes? Uh, can we get on a call or maybe we can meet? So asking someone if they have the emotional bandwidth and then asking for support is one thing. And then also communicating and letting people know that this is what is happening. So it definitely takes, because the nature of my diagnosis is that I have triggers. Like I sometimes I don't even understand, well, I don't even know what my triggers are until an episode has happened. And then in therapy, we figure out, okay, that might be a trigger that has, you know, uh, that has made me go through a, a depressive episode or a hypomanic episode. So uh, identifying triggers is an ongoing mm-hmm. process for me all the time. So Understanding my triggers and everything is one thing. And it's like, it's because it's an ongoing process, I may not know what might be triggering for me or what might push me into a depressive episode or a hypermanic episode. So communicating that as well and helping your partner understand the nature of your diagnosis is very crucial. So yeah, honestly, the two things is seeking for support, seeking support and uh, communication. Yeah, definitely. Communication for sure. And yeah, just be honest. Like, hey, this is what, like, be vulnerable. You know, you just have to be honest. <laughs> this is what I'm going through. This is what what I go through sometimes. And you like it or don't. If you don't, you can get out of it. <laughs> but if, if you can go ahead and support me, then that's awesome. Then we can be a team. Yeah, honestly, like, if there's no pressure for it, like, right. it's like, oh, if someone's not supportive or they don't get get it, they're not the right person. For me, right. So. Let's see. I'll like, tell you. Totally. Yeah. And so uh, growth and self-improvement are, of course, lifelong journeys, especially as a a young adult facing unique challenges. Um, How has your mental health journey influenced your personal development? And what advice would you give to others who are striving for growth? Oh, I love that. So when I was 14, I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be a surgeon, actually. 
or teacher i don't know like these things keep changing you know when you're young <laughs> and then i was 15 when i went through depression and i was like and before that i was a little ignorant about depression because i'm 14 i'm living in india i these things are never talked about so i i don't know what depression is or i don't know what these things are and then i'm 15 and i'm like and suddenly i go through a lot of trauma and next thing i know i'm suicidal right i just know that this is bad like live every day waking up and feel like dying and stuff like that it's just bad um i don't understand what it is and then eventually i like look it up and stuff like that and i get to like educate myself a bit and then when that then i understand oh this is depression this is bad because i got like the worst end of depression i like that was my first experience with depression i understood and got empathetic towards people struggling with depression from a very early age i was experiencing ptsd i was getting panic attacks i was dealing with so much anxiety in my life at that moment for like about 2 years and it was just it was incredibly hard for me to live every single day to just keep going so this and then the diagnosis of mental health this all of this has, this has helped me also oh, the diagnosis of bipolar all of this has helped me understand myself better and it it has shaped up my whole course of like life when i went through all of that that's when i'm like you know what i must be going through all of that trouble for something right and that's when the podcast came into place that's when all my mental health organizations slowly came into place so my personal journey uh, of growth has been very much influenced by this because because of my mental health experiences that has shaped me into my interest that has shaped me help me get into this field of mental health and psychology um a lot like these are the things that pushed me otherwise i don't think i would be pursuing psychology if it wasn't for these experiences at all i would probably be like getting my pre med or med uh, or something like that honestly so um yeah it's that and i've always like ever since i was a kid like ever since i was like 10 11 i've always just read autobiographies biographies non fiction books so self development and growth is something i've always been passionate about from a very very early age uh just going through all of that it has made me more passionate about it more like because you need to be growing right but mm-hmm. i don't think my mental health journey has impacted my interest for growth as much uh, i think those are a little like two separate entities like it's just my mental health journey is at one place and my a uh, passion for growing is another because i've been a person who always want to grow who always wants to keep evolving with mental health journey it has made the growth essential in the like in a, in in one sense right because if i don't keep growing i will get stuck at some point so i need to like keep growing and stuff like that so yeah um that is something i i i can't now that i think about it i think those are a little like separate things um but they did influence my personal journey about the decisions that i take for studying in college stuff like that for sure uh, just the field that i am in right now and uh, regarding uh, could you repeat the question about what advice oh yeah so um what advice would you go ahead and give to others who are actually striving for growth for striving for growth i would say read as much as you can consume the right type of content consuming mm-hmm. the content in this day and age is so crucial there is there is so much out there but the same and it gives you a decision paralysis you don't understand what to like what to seek what to not seek and um, yeah it's you know there is i love gary vee he has helped me understand entrepreneurship leadership business much better i love uh, jay shetty his work um there is this podcast by andrew huberman i love his podcast there is this uh, so just consuming the right content consuming um the right kind of content through media youtube spotify like the podcast or the books whatever your medium of learning is right i would encourage when someone is on the path of growth do that and i would uh, i would say one crucial element for growth is accountability mm-hmm. you are the one who is responsible for your life it's like if not now when if not you you know so you need to be very accountable with these things because no one's going to push you no one's going to make you do these things you are the one who is responsible for it so you need to be really aware about these things and i think <clears throat> delaying your <coughs> sorry delaying your um, gratification is another important aspect that you would uh, you would need so yeah my advice would be focus on delaying your gratification for longer gains and the second part would be showing more accountability in your life and just showing up for yourself every day and 
the other wait so there is a third part as well showing grace and compassion because your best will look different on different days and that's okay Right. Wow. I wish I had your wisdom at that at your age. I could have been like, I'm set for life because <laughs> that's incredible. And I'm just so happy that you're doing what you're doing. So keep going and you're doing amazing things. Uh, but I wanted to ask if our listeners wanted to go ahead and contact you and maybe even like for collaboration or to support you and your projects and um, initiatives that are upcoming. How can they go ahead and contact you? You can find me on Instagram at the rate avantika.v02 or uh, you can find my podcast on Spotify and YouTube. It's called Beautiful You. Um, you can find us on Instagram at the rate beautiful you.pod. And uh, yeah, if you just look it up, you'll find me on LinkedIn as well. So it's Avantika Bharad, uh, B-H-A-R-A-D. So um, yeah, I would love for some collaborations. I would love to know what you thought about it so far. I would love, I would love to just connect. That's awesome, Avetika. Thank you so much. Any last thoughts or any last words you'd like to share? No, that's it. You've been a wonderful host and thank you so much for having me. Of course, my pleasure. Thank you.